Can I hook the magma worm? I can! Whoa! <laughs> what? Whoa! Wait, what? what? Hi, I'm H2. And I bet you're wondering how I got myself into this predicament. Well, let me tell you. It all started when I purchased and downloaded Risk of Rain 2 from Steam onto my PC. Ah, this game is awesome. I know I'm quite late to the party on this one because Risk of Rain 2 has been in early access for a really long time. But I just recently bought a new PC and I've been catching up on all the games I was missing. Uh, before I had this new PC, I was using this thing to play games and make videos on. I know, it's hideous, look at it. But now I've bought a new PC, and look at how handsome it is, and it runs all the games I could possibly want to play. And one of the first games that I got was Risk of Rain 2. I played quite a lot of the first Risk of Rain, it's an incredible game, but I was wondering how well the second game did at capturing the madness of the first game and making it into a 3D third person experience. Ah! Yeah, it did pretty good. I can't stress this enough, but this game really does feel like the first Risk of Rain, but in 3D. It's no easy feat to make it feel so true to the first game while simultaneously being a completely different experience, but they've done an incredible job at keeping the things that were able to be directly translated from 2D to 3D, whilst removing and reworking and tweaking the things that didn't quite make much sense in a 3D environment. For the most part, with a couple of small exceptions, they've done an incredibly good job at doing this. Every single detail in this game comes together to make it feel true to the original. The monster design, the stages, the character design, the soundtrack, it all comes together to make something that feels like Risk of Rain. The monster design is awesome. There's a lot of new monsters and also a lot of old returning monsters, and the returning monsters look pretty much exactly how I imagined they'd look in 3D. And the new monsters feel like they're just as much a part of the world as the old ones were. Some of them have kind of derpy walking animations though, which can feel a little bit weird. Just importing the exact monsters and attacks straight from Risk of Rain 1 into Risk of Rain 2 wouldn't have worked very well. In 2D, enemies having only melee attacks is completely fine, because you only have two dimensions in which to evade their melee attacks. But when you slap that extra D on there, avoiding melee attacks becomes far too easy. So, the vast majority of enemies have a ranged attack and the few that don't make up for that in some other way, like maybe they can fly, or they overwhelm you in large numbers, or they charge you, or something like that. The same idea goes for the survivors though. Almost all of the melee survivors have some sort of ranged damage. In fact, Acrid and Loader may as well be a ranged DPS and a ranged assassin, respectively, because despite having melee attacks, their playstyles don't really reward you for getting up close and personal to the enemies. The only true melee character is the mercenary, and they handled his gameplay extremely well. A melee survivor could have been extremely weak in 3D, but they made sure to give him lots of mobility and also give him a way to evade attacks. This allows him to weave in and out of combat with enemies without getting one shot. Without all of this mobility, the character would be extremely useless. His kit in Risk of Rain 2 is basically the same as in Risk of Rain 1, but luckily that had lots of mobility and lots of invincibility frames for him to dodge attacks with. The returning survivors in Risk of Rain 2 were redone and reworked in a really awesome way. The loader in the first game basically had all of the same abilities as they do in the second game. In the first game, the loader had a pylon similar to in the second game, but it worked slightly differently. You would place one down, and then place the other somewhere else, and any enemies in between the two pylons would take damage. And this works fine in 2D, because it's very easy to catch enemies in between the two pylons, but in 3D they'd just walk sideways in the third dimension and out of range and they wouldn't take any damage. So instead they just made the pylon zap nearby enemies in a radius, which is a very clever change. But the best change about the loader is the fact that she can now do this. Loader's grappling hook was kept intact, but being in 3D space allows you to do all sorts of crazy stunts. With this new mobility, they decided to give the loader an ability that capitalises off of all this new movement speed that she can gain. 
So the loader was given a big old punch move that allows you to deal more damage the faster you move, which is what allows me to do this. The returning melee characters like Loader and Acrid were essentially just given mobility and slight tweaks so that they don't just instantly die to hordes of enemies. Characters like Commando were able to stay mostly the same, but the Huntress is a very interesting one. A big part of her kit in the first game was that she could fire all of her abilities whilst moving, which all the other cast couldn't do. They needed to stop for a second to use their melee attacks, ranged attacks, or any of their abilities. In Risk of Rain 2, all of the characters could attack while moving anyway, so they needed a way to make the Huntress feel very fluid and mobile without just using the same thing from the first game. Their solution was to make it so that she can use all of her attacks while sprinting and all of her shots home in on enemies, so she can kite around better than most of the other characters in the game. I thought this was a super clever way to keep the theme of the character in a game with a completely reworked movement system. One of the characters who I'm not too sure about though is the Engineer. Essentially, he's extremely weak on his own, but can place down two turrets which inherit all of his items. So he can have some super weird and crazy combos with his turrets that make them completely wipe the stage of enemies in seconds. He uses an item called Bustling Fungus very well, because his turrets are always standing still, and Bustling Fungus heals you when you're stood still for two or more seconds, so the turrets permanently gain the healing effect from this item. On one hand, I think it's super awesome that a character can utilise some of the items in the game that the other survivors find next to useless, such as the fungus. But on the other hand, I think that the gameplay that these combos encourage is just boring. It incentivizes the player to just stand still and not really shoot anything or do anything themselves, and in my opinion, that is mind-numbingly boring. The Bungus Farmer himself is completely different from all of the other characters in the game, and that would be a good thing if his kit made him unique in a way that didn't revolve around standing still and looking at enemies whilst they die. They brought the engineer from 2D to 3D in a really cool way, but I just think the concept itself leans into this playstyle that I personally don't really find particularly enjoyable. The thing that really gets me though, the thing that really makes it as someone who played Risk of Rain 1, is the soundtrack. It's just beautiful. It manages to capture that same chaos and intensity of the first game's soundtrack, while also managing to make itself distinct from the first game's soundtrack. And it also manages to quote some melodies and phrases from the first game's soundtrack to give you that fuzzy, nostalgic feeling inside whilst you're playing. The soundtrack is a large part of what makes this game feel like a true reimagining of the first game. All of the gameplay changes pull most of the legwork, but without the soundtrack, Risk of Rain just wouldn't be Risk of Rain. Thanks for watching.